About to catch another flight. Woo! I'm about, about to make a one bite. I just want to have a good time. I just want to have a good time. Hey. <laughs> Tribe, we're back with another video. Listen, I'm sure you guys are wondering, what in the world is the elder doing? She's popping out a video every day. What is she up to? Well, you guys, you know I took some time off. And if you have, uh, if you know me outside of YouTube, you know that if you don't see Karima around for a while, please know she's working or traveling. In most cases, she's probably spending time um, at the monastery, okay, in the meditation center. If if I go away and I'm in isolation, please know I'm coming back with some heat. I'm coming back with some fire. Okay. Allows me to tap into my creative energetic space. Being up in the in the mountains or being near water or traveling and doing the things I love doing, it really does energize me, okay? Listen, that kind of stuff, it really matters, especially when you are creating something in the midst of life, lifing. And so I, I come out of a period of, of, of that and just know that these videos are going somewhere, okay? Especially for those of you who don't know me, this is, um, this is a good teachable moment. So I hope you guys are not getting tired of the videos just yet, but um, it's going somewhere, I can promise you that. Yes, so thank you all for being here. And by the way, we are growing. We got about 20 sub mod new subscribers. I want to say thank you to all of those who recently joined. I appreciate you. Annette, Denise, welcome to the tribe. Uh, Kojo, uh, Batu, I probably... I'm probably making it too difficult. Anyway, we're pulling it from my book, The Return of the Divine Feminine. All the wisdom from Elder Eden is coming from that book today. We're going to be using that wisdom to help us navigate through today's video. Today's video is going to be a two-part two video. The first part of this video is about dating and or marrying or being with someone in a position of power, how that works, okay? And we're going to be talking about Nia Luang. Um, that's the second part of this video, Okay, and let me just tell you that when we tie all of this together, I'm really hoping that it makes sense. And even just to discuss the, the you know, the idea of a man in power or being in a position of power, and how in the world does that correlate to the story of Miss Neil Long and her very public um, um relationship with uh, Mr. Emmy Odoka. We're going to be talking about that today. Please stick around with us. Let's learn something new, okay? A new perspective. We're going to call this hut wisdom because we know hut wisdom is generally not what you would hear uh, in the mainstream. Hut wisdom we know can be a little bit different, okay? So you have to have a little bit of an open mind when you are um, reading uh, or learning from Elder Eden. It's, it's a little bit different, okay? So keep that in mind while you are listening and or watching this video let's jump right into the first part of this video which is dating a man of power i want to give you two short stories okay the first story goes like this it is a sunday morning the choir just got finished tearing down the house darling all right and what song were they singing? They were probably singing, um, what's the Tamla Man song? Um, I don't know it. You know it. Just imagine whatever song you have in your mind. Imagine the song. The church had just been, listen, it's been rocking, okay? The church was rocking with your favorite church song. It was over. And all of the people start to disperse throughout the church, all right? There's a young wife who had been married for about maybe four years at this point. And she's in the back talking to the ladies of the church, and her husband is in the front conversing with the musicians and all the other people at the church, okay? And there's an elder watching all of this go down. Well, the elder approaches the young wife, and she says to the wife, Go and get your husband. So the young wife was a little you know, taken aback by it. And she said, what do you mean? And she said, I said, go and get your husband. Now, the wife 
looked over and noticed that, although the husband had been talking to the musicians and other parishioners in the church, there was also a young lady who was being extremely extra friendly. And so the wife said, "Oh no 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 no! I know her. She's a friend of the family. It's okay. Trust me, really, it's okay." And the elder responded, "Go and get your husband." The elder walked out of the church. Okay, and the young woman didn't want to seem as though she was, you know, being disrespectful. So she walked over to the husband and joined the conversation, but she really wasn't too interested in it. Okay. She trusted her husband, so she left. And the elder met her outside and said, "I did not mean to offend you, but I've been married for fifty-five years, and I know when I see another woman who wants what another woman has. You have a man in a position of power. He comes from a good family, and that woman wants what you have." Well, she left the young wife with that thought. I want you to sit with that story for just a minute, okay? Sit with that story, as I slowly take you into story number two. Wife is forty-seven years old. Husband is sixty-two. He runs a large mega church. He has money. And he has power, and he is a man of God. Each Sunday, he gets in front of the congregation, all right, and he teaches the word of God, okay. And there is a sea of women, all shapes, sizes, social, economic backgrounds, education levels, watching this man every week. Every convocation, every other church he visits, his churchgoers are very loyal. They will show up. Well, this particular Sunday, the pastor gets up before the church, and he says to the church, "I have a confession to make. I've been sleeping with my secretary of the church." Who happens to be my wife's best friend? The wife is seated, with her legs crossed at the ankles, her hands in her lap. There's no tears, there's no yelling, and there apparently seems to be no sense of surprise. He had a moment in front of the church. He was able to say what he wanted to say. I want you to sit on that for a moment, okay? Sit on that for a moment. Those two stories, okay? I want you to consider. I gave you all those stories, okay? And I want you to consider something. Here's where I'm going. When a man has money and he has power, he is a hot commodity, not just to gold diggers, darling. Because that's the way the general world and the general public wants you to believe that it's a bunch of gold diggers waiting to take your husband, especially when he's a good man, a good provider. He comes from a good family. It makes him more attractive generally, right? But the elder teaches us that it's on a primal level. It's biology, right? Women are wired to want someone who can provide. That natural wiring allows for the proliferation of the human race, and we can say, you know, like the day I thought she was scheming on that on that woman's husband. She was scheming the whole time. I'm, I'm a I'm a you know I'm a mother bear, so sometimes I feel that way. But here's where I'm going. All right, now that I've calmed my mother bear energy down, let me just let me tell you where I'm going. People can be idiots, male and female. They can be idiots, self-serving idiots, submitting to their primal urges of "I want that thing that she has." Okay, simply to serve themselves. People are idiots. We get it. Now, how does that tie into? How does these two stories tie into Miss Nia Long? 
Well, Miss Nia Long has a gentleman who is the head coach in the NBA, okay? Which means he's assumably making a nice, decent amount of money, okay? And because he's the head coach, that again, gives him a position of power, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about men in a position of power, as well as men who have money. They become hot commodities, and everywhere they go, they are highly sought after. But what people fail to realize is that when it's men like that, in most cases, it's proximity that matters most. Proximity means the people that are closest to them, the best friend, the secretary, the person who books the flights. So, if you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention, the primal urges will start to come up. The opportunity presents itself, and then there you have it. Before long, what was once yours is now that of someone else's. But the elder teaches us that. She teaches us that you can be a knee along and find yourself in a position of being engaged to someone and, and having that happen. Whether she was married to him and it happened, it still would have happened, whether she had the ring or not. Marriage, the marriage doesn't change that, okay? People want to say that it does, but it doesn't. Because the elder says it's in the person to be as they are. Things come from you out of you because they are you nothing can come out of you that is not within you okay so the elder is telling us and nia if you choose the honeybee no matter how much money he has he's still going to be the honeybee if you choose the boar he's going to be the boar no matter how much money he has if you choose the goat, he's going to be the goat. If you choose the penguin, he's going to be the penguin. People are going to be who they are regardless of proximity, money, and power. But the elder adds just one more thing to it. She said, get you someone who values respect if you're looking for monogamy. They want to be respected. They don't want to lose respect. They are concerned with respect, not just power and money, because a man who values himself... By the money he has in his pocket and the options that he has at hand, he will always lose his wife to the pool boy. <laughs> the man who values himself by the money in his pocket and his options will always lose his wife to the pool boy. And someday I'll explain what that means. But for right now, I want you to understand this. If you are looking to date a man in a position of power, in a position of being up front, always out front, most like the honeybee, okay? If you are looking to date someone like that, you must know it is a constant daily battle. And if you are a jealous woman, this is not the position for you. Know your lane and stick to it. Now, with a new book coming out, you'll be able to get a, get a better understanding of what your lane is. That way, you can match yourself up with your mate. You can match yourself up with the boar. You can match yourself up with the honeybee. You can match yourself accordingly, okay? Stay in your lane. If you're a jealous woman, you should not be dating with a man who's in a position of power. A man who has money and power is not going to work for you. It's going to drive you bonkers, dear. It's going to drive you bonkers. A woman who is going to be able to date a man in a position and a man who's in power has to be okay in her own skin. All right? She has to be secure in knowing that he's coming back home, right? That's the deal. He's coming back home. And if that's not your gig, understand it's not your gig. But remember, you get to choose. You choose if you stay or if you go. And as far as my reading with Nia is concerned... There's still a lot of energy that she is holding for Emmy. And it's quite natural because she allowed him to multiply himself within her womb. So it makes perfect sense that she still has that. 
If she wanted to, she can use her womb energy to, to pull him back if she wanted to. But I get a deep sense that he's still looking for something more. So even if she was able to use that womb power to bring him back, she might still have that same issue again. So what I'm going to say to Nia is, darling, <laughs> you choose.